This Week in IT. Businesses are cautious about adopting AI solutions like Copilot for Microsoft 365 because of concerns about security. But as Microsoft announces fast adoption of the new technology, can your organization afford to sit back and wait to see how it all unfolds? I look at some of the risks and mitigations that you can put in place. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Windows, Azure and Microsoft 365. This week's episode is sponsored by our friends at Semperis. Before we get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask you. As we go live, we're on about 7,190 subscribers. I'd love it if we could push that up to 7,200 this week. So if you'd like to watch this kind of weekly news update, then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on all the latest uploads. As we all know, Copilot for Microsoft 365 hasn't been generally available for very long, but at the end of July, Satya Nadella announced that it's seen a 60% increase in bots created with Copilot Studio in the last quarter. We've been surveying our audience at Petri.com over the last couple of months, and it's clear from the results that Microsoft 365 Copilot is the AI solution that most organizations are gravitating towards, and that security is the biggest concern. But of course, there are lots of great things that you can do with Copilot if you decide that it's worth the cost involved. You can quickly perform admin and any kind of complex task that involves processing lots of data and then making decisions. It could be as simple as triaging your inbox, creating and assigning tasks using a meeting transcript, summarizing documents, helping you to draft written text, analyzing data, writing code, or even resolving customer service issues using a bot. But just imagine the amount of time that it could save your organization and allow your people to be much more productive. So of course, why there are some risks in AI automation and adoption at this stage, security being probably the main concern for businesses, there are considerable benefits that if you don't adopt these new technologies that you could end up in a weaker market position at some point in the future. Now, the reason to have this conversation right at this moment in time is at the beginning of the month, there was the annual Black Hats, Black Hat 2024, where some researchers set out to show the vulnerabilities in Microsoft Copilot and how they can be used in a practical way to extract information that somebody who ought not to be able to have that permission to access it is able to get at it really easily. And one of the researchers, Michael Bargery, who was a former senior security architect in the Azure Security Office and now runs his own company, Zenity, outlined 15 ways that Copilot can be used to potentially compromise your organization's data. But before he even started talking about those 15 things, he pointed out that the original release of Copilot Studio, so this is basically a no-code or low-code solution that allows employees to create their own bots, you know, to solve whatever business problems they need to work with every day. Maybe, you know, something like a customer service bot, for instance, like I outlined earlier. This solution was essentially creating bots for users and making them by default publicly available on the internet. So he was able to search the internet and find literally thousands of these bots that users had created that assumedly the IT organization was not aware of. And he was basically able to use them to access all sorts of uh, sensitive data that these organizations had accidentally made available. Now, since that was discovered, Microsoft has changed the default in Copilot Studio. So any co-pilots that you create are now private by default, but anything that was created before that configuration change, you're going to have to go back and make sure that they're uh, adequately secured if they should be private to your organization. But before I look into some of the other security issues that Zenity highlighted with Copilot for Microsoft 365, here's a quick message from our sponsors, Semperis. 
Did you know that Active Directory is exploited in 9 out of 10 cyber attacks? Once cyber criminals control your Active Directory, it's game over. With access to AD, attackers can gain control of your entire network. And if AD goes down, business comes to a halt. And it's not just on-premises Active Directory that's under attack. Cyber criminals are targeting Azure Active Directory too. Attackers can gain entry in the cloud and move to on-premises identity systems or vice versa. To keep threat actors out, you need to find and fix Active Directory security gaps. Meet Purple Knight, your ally in defending against adversaries trying to breach your hybrid Active Directory environment. Purple Knight is a free Active Directory security assessment tool built by some Paris identity experts. With Purple Knight, you can spot Active Directory vulnerabilities before attackers do. Purple Knight scans your hybrid environment for hundreds of indicators of exposure or compromise in both on-premises Active Directory and Azure AD. Purple Knight gives you an overall security score and prioritized remediation guidance for fixing AD security vulnerabilities. Now, I'm not going to go through all 15 of these potential compromises that Michael laid out, but I just want to go through some of the things that surprise me about the demonstrations that have been available. So Michael and his company have basically contributed a couple of new modules to something called PowerPorn, which is you know a publicly available piece of software that you can download from GitHub. The first one being LOL Copilot, which essentially allowed them to use injection prompts to extract information that maybe they ought not to have been able to extract from Copilot. So here's one example of something that they were able to do. So they were able to insert an HTML tag into an email to replace a correct bank account number with that of the attacker without changing any of the reference information or altering the model. And that's quite astonishing, of course, and you can imagine how that could be used quite easily in a malicious way. And what's more, their tool is able to do all of this completely undetected. So Michael has essentially coined a new term for this and he calls them remote copilot executions. Of course, that's kind of a play on words for remote code execution, but he says saying that these remote copilot executions are essentially the same as a remote code execution, but just for the LLM world. So one of the many things that were demonstrated was the ability to return a result within copilot and remove the sensitivity labels that are applied to that result that you get. So imagine in Copilot you're using some information that's available in your tenant to ground the LLM and get an answer back. Now, the way that Copilot works is, let's say you have a series of sensitivity labels applied to that information in your tenant. The result that you get back in Copilot also has those sensitivity labels applied to it. So it inherits the sensitivity labels, obviously, to make sure that the information with the answer, you know, has the same, you know, level of security applied to it for the end user. And you can see that in the, you know, in the result that you get back from the prompt, those sensitivity labels are written there. And the references to the information that it used to get the answer for you. Now, Michael was able to demonstrate the ability to essentially disable those references to the information and the sensitivity labels. Now, of course, the references and the sensitivity labels, they're all really important in giving the user confidence that they can trust the answer from Copilot. So that's obviously one of the functions of the references. But the fact that they were also able to remove the sensitivity labels is also a little bit of a disaster for the security model that Microsoft has implemented around Copilot. He also demonstrated a technique that's known as rag poisoning. So Copilot is a rag based uh, AI solution. So what that means is retrieval augmented generation. So it's not just necessarily using the information that's in your tenant, but augmenting the result with other data that might help to give a better result, for instance. 
Now, rag poisoning is basically an attack on a system like Copilot that provides an answer that's poisoned with false or misinformation. Now, this was demonstrated in what was really quite a, a, an astonishing thing, <laughs> is that imagine you've got two users in the same Microsoft 365 tenant, and one of them sends a malicious file to a particular user. Now, that file, you know, arrives by email, let's say, the user doesn't even have to open the document or the email because that information is automatically indexed, regardless of whether it contains, you know, correct information or not. And then if that user who received the malicious file performs some kind of query to Copilot that involves retrieving information that's connected to that malicious file, then, well, okay, you're able to essentially get an answer, but it doesn't contain the information that you were expecting to see. Now, because Copilot, you know, is able to provide references and these sensitivity labels. The attack involves inserting this malicious information, but also showing the user that it can be trusted because of the reference points, the sensitivity labels are in place. Everything is there that gives the user the indication that the information that's been returned is correct. But unless they go and really double check that, then this rag poisoning attack is pretty concerning. Be careful who you're giving guest user access to. All right, so this stuff sounds all quite scary and concerning, but what could you do to protect yourself? Well, I would say at the moment, be aware that there's no such thing as 100% security regarding anything, you know, whether it's artificial intelligence or anything else. But there are some things that you can do to really reduce the risk. The first thing is that you should get your security in Microsoft 365 sorted out. So Copilot depends on the existing security mechanisms that you have in place for email and for SharePoint. So, you know, make sure that you've got permissions sorted out, who can access what, make sure that you've got all your sensitive labels set up and all the permissions that are connected to them uh, in place so that at least you've got those basic foundations there and working correctly because if you don't then essentially security for Copilot is already going to be broken. Copilot Studio could potentially be a risk. Make sure that any copilots that have already been created with that studio are not being publicly shared on the internet. That's really important to go and check. And have a look at the new admin controls and make sure that everything's set there and make sure that users are not allowed to create by default new copilots that could be publicly shared. Now, Zenity have another module called Copilot Hunter that can really help you to make sure that there's nothing being exposed on the internet. So it can scan the internet and help you understand what's being exposed. And there's also another part of that tool that can allow you to scan your own Microsoft 365 tenant. Whether you've already deployed Copilot or whether you're still in the process of considering it, you might want to have a look at the LLM AI cybersecurity and governance top 10 checklist from the Open Web Application Security Project. Now, Zenity is recommending that you go and have a look at this document, and it's quite involved, even the 10 check points at the end. There are lots of elements to them that you need to sit down and really understand. But it would be a good idea to at least have a look at that document and see if it's a framework that you could essentially apply to your organization to limit the risks. And something that I don't believe is possible today, but please let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. You could consider allowing users to access specific bots that have been created in Copilot Studio that have access to limited sets of data in your organization to help lower the risk. Now, I think the problem at the moment is that Copilot is essentially on or off, and then you optionally get access to Copilot Studio if your administrators allow it, and then to the bots that are created using it. But wouldn't it be great if you could somehow give users access to just the bots, but not necessarily allow them to access the other Copilot tools that just have access to everything that, as a user, they have access to? While you know all these little things are being worked out in terms of how to better control security and make sure that these things that were demonstrated at Black Hat cannot be easily exploited, like 
being able to remove references and sensitivity labels and all of those kind of foundational things that give confidence in Copilot answers and help organizations secure it. At the end of the day, you need to really look at how your competitors and how the business world is starting to use these kinds of AI tools in their organizations and look at the potential risks, but of course, also the benefits. Because I think if you don't start to at least consider and look at these things and start to gradually implement them, businesses are going to very quickly be left behind as others are able to implement all sorts of efficiencies that are going to allow them to really do things at a, a pace and efficiency and a level that were maybe not possible in the past. But don't forget Copilot and other similar tools. It's really all in its infancy at the moment. You know, we haven't been talking about this stuff for very long. It's only really in the last year or so that these things have become generally available. Why there are lots of great things that Copilot, because that's where I have the most experience, can do. There are lots of things that it doesn't do very well at the moment, you know, like Copilot in Excel. I mean, it's still in preview, to be fair, in Excel, but it's been, you know, it hasn't really lived up to the promises of the demos that Microsoft showed, I think, already two years ago. And, you know, if you ask it to analyze data or perform some action, it can't really do it, you know, it'll just kind of tell you how you can do it. It's like, well, okay, I could have worked that out for myself. But nevertheless, you know, I think those things are going to be worked out and there's really, you know, a huge amount of promise for improving the way that we all do business and the way that we work. Let me know in the comments below if you're using Copilot, uh, if you've got any particular security challenges with it that you've managed to overcome. Has it lived up to the promises? I'd love to know what your experience has been. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because that helps us to grow the channel and get the video seen by more people on YouTube. I'm going to leave another video on the screen for you now about Microsoft 365 Backup, which went generally available just a few weeks ago. I'd like to thank again our sponsors this week, Semperis. But that's it from me today and I'll see you next time.